Welcome to part 3 of my tutorial series where I create an animated low poly model for Unity from scratch. This series is a top level view of my entire workflow. So we will be covering a lot of different disciplines and software along the way. I'll try to talk you through my process, thoughts and experiences while also mentioning common pitfalls and misconceptions along the way. I'll also try to offer some tips and su suggestions, of course. If you want to support the making of these types of videos, you can find me on Patreon, link in the description. Anyway, as usual, feel free to leave any thoughts, suggestions or feedbacks in the comments below. And yeah, time to div dive into part 3. Why, why am I always fubbing the dive? <laughs> Okay, time to actually start the sculpting. And, well, I've already mentioned the strengths of uh, VR sculpting in particular. The uh, organic part, the sort of uh, creatures, characters, trees. I mean, even things like stones and so on, even if they're not organic they're sort of in a system of erosion and all that stuff that really makes them distinct from buildings and uh, other creations that we as humans come up with. we tend to do things very angular either or very smooth but in a sense perfect almost and this kind of thing is a bit tricky to sculpt. I know there's some specific software that try to create an environment where you can sculpt these sort of hard surface things and that's great and all, but uh, for me, I love Coden for one simple reason and it's the voxel room where you have sort of unlimited freedom to create. You can yeah, go nuts, draw, erase, move around, and it's it's a non-destructive workflow in the sense that uh, voxels don't really care if you keep adding to them or removing from them. When you're in the sculpting room, on the other hand, if you're sculpting something, pushing something, you're actually moving vertices around, you're deforming an existing mesh so that's the main reason for me sticking with the voxel room despite the, <laughs> the developers insistence that, <laughs> that I start using the sculpt room but yeah so the, the pitfalls when sculpting can be a bit similar to when working with the concept art it's easy to start trying to make things perfect, but what you learn after doing this for a while is that the, the sculpt itself is meant to provide you with a lot of details, a lot of surface, organic, sort of uh, all these folds and ridges and bumps and all of these things so it's tempting to when you work on these models and you zoom out and you realize that oh crap the the leg isn't at the right angle or the the hand is way too big or those sort of things that you oh okay i need to go in and start changing this uh, either just erasing it and starting over or try to shape them or do these th sort of things and end up putting in a lot of work which when you really start thinking about it is totally unnecessary what i've ended up realizing and doing after well make, doing this for over a year now is actually try to make the uh, extremities the uh, hands the feet and so on bigger 
than they are supposed to be. With how voxel density works, it will allow you to do add more details to areas where the um, end user, the player, the, whoever is watching this, is expecting to see more details. They're expecting more details on the hands, on the face, on the, well, not so much the feet really, but still, this, these are all details you can put in and you can have fun with and you can add character and even if whatever you're working on is l looking dorky as hell in <laughs> in uh, codon or whatever uh, scouting software you're using it's it's totally fine once you export everything from here and take it back to your uh, other software of choice or if it's blender or maya or max or whatever you can there you can take things and start uh, working on the proportions and making sure that everything is uh, unified and looking correct from a more zoomed out view so to speak so that's really my my main recommendations i mean besides that the same goes for scouting as for 3d modeling practice 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 and try to be active try to show your work try to look at others work try to put everything in a context and don't worry about your stuff not looking great it won't uh, for a lot of the time and even further down the line you're gonna be usually your own worst critic and you're gonna focus on all the little areas that you think you got wrong while most people who see your stuff aren't really <laughs> in general not gonna be so laser focused on those specific areas they're gonna have a more overarching general view of of your work i probably should elaborate a little bit on the the difference between the volume room and the sculpting room in Cordon. I, as I mentioned, I'm very fond of the volume room and I I think it's so much fun to work with voxels. The, the advantage to the sculpting room, on the other hand, is that you can push the details a bit further. With the voxels you are you're kind of limited by your system, your graphics card and processor and, well, all that stuff. With the sculpting, you're able to uh, make more detailed folds and uh, creases and all that stuff. And as you see the hand I'm working on here, if I were to take it into the sculpting room, you could push it further and make it more detailed. But for my purposes you're not really gonna zoom in on the hand of the the, <laughs> the so mad mutant with the propane tank that's charging you screaming and then <laughs> exploding so the hand's not gonna be that important to the the player they're, they're not gonna have the time or the opportunity to study it so closely and historically i've i was a pretty early adopter of Codon in a early access alpha uh, stage so I had a lot of issues with uh, converting volume um, models to sculpt models you have to do a conversion in order to move between the different rooms and it's uh, it's gradually gotten better every now and then I, I give it a try as I mentioned I I'm talk I talk with the developers uh, here and there and they are, they're always eager to try and uh, get me into the, the sculpting room. I guess see what, what I can do there. <laughs> but up until recently, I never managed to convert these very high high poly models to the sculpting room. There was always issues and Quantum kept crashing and so on. But I'm very happy to mention that there's 
another project beside this one. I actually sculpted it before this one, but I haven't gotten around to figuring out the video format and all that stuff. So, but I actually did a comparably high poly model similar to this uh, mutant here. And I managed to get it over to the sculpting room without issues. So I actually did a sculpting pass on that after the, the volume. So yeah, that's, uh, that's probably going to be my next video series after this one when I talk about that project. So I'll be able to expand a little more on the uh, sculpting versus volume. But yeah. I like to make a bit of fun of uh, <laughs> the relationship between these two, and I'm I'm a huge fan of the volume sculpting, so, uh, volume room. So I'm I'm always trying to uh, push the codon developers to work on that more because yeah, it's my home. <laughs> you see me here working on the legs and the pants for the the mutant. There, there's actually some uh, cloth tools in the cordon in the sculpting room but I haven't I haven't actually given them a try yet so that's gonna be interesting to do but for now here I'm hand sculpting the, uh, the folds and so on for the pants and you could see a little while back how I uh, did the loops for the belt around the waist and I actually ended up uh, going back into Blender and doing a, a proper 3D model of the uh, belt buckle and the belt. So that's not actually sculpted. And uh, the way I made this work was by actually exporting the uh, model that I'd gotten back into Blender. So I took that with the belt, exported it back into Gordon, and I did a second pass on the pants in the volume room where I corrected all the loops and made sure they enveloped the belt and that everything fit together uh, nicely and so on. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, part three done. We've done the concept art, the uh, hard surface modeling and the sculpting. So in uh, part four, we'll move on to the mesh cleanup and retopology. I, I hope Mats Larsson will <laughs> enjoy finally getting to see this part. I'm not sure if I'm going to cover UV unwrapping in a separate part or not, but yeah, as usual, thanks for watching my silly little videos. <laughs> And feel free to leave any comments, feedbacks, etc. Uh, below. And hopefully I'll see you part four. All right. Bye. I, do I need to? Do I need to work out some sort of uh, <laughs> catchphrase or something? I don't know. It's not really my style. Uh, <laughs>